Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the original stories by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Sunday morning, darling. Wake? Mm-hmm. Are you? Yep. Sleep well? Wonderfully. Did you? Mm-hmm. Hear the church bells? Been listening to them. One of the better sounds left in the world. You know, I never used to like Sundays before I found you. Mm, I didn't either. Unless you play golf or something, I think you have to have someone you love very much to really enjoy Sundays. I think you have something there. It must be a very sad, long day for some people. But for others, darling, it's a very short, glad day. Like us. Mm-hmm. Even taking a walk after lunch and feeding the pigeons is fun. Or watching the boats go by on the river. Yeah. There's only one thing about Sunday I don't like. What? Breakfast. Since when don't you like breakfast? As far as I can judge, you look forward to it all night long. (laughs) It's only because I'm hungry. (laughs) Sundays, I'm also lazy. The combination raises the most awful conflict. Oh, why didn't you say so? Now, you mean that you don't want to get up and fix it, Yeah, that's what I mean. Well, ring for the maid. Oh, I don't know. I don't like to disturb her on Sunday morning. She likes to stay in bed late, too. Oh, you spoil her. But it's high time she was up. I'll ring for her. (laughs) Yes, I'll come in, Mr. Norton. Well, you all have breakfast this morning. Silly. Well, Cleopatra, your <laughs> name is Cleopatra, isn't it? I'll have coffee, toast, cereal, bacon, eggs, and omelet, please. Oh, omelet is eggs, you dope. Cleopatra, I'll just have coffee, toast, and cereal. Yes, and Miss Norton, coming right up. David, where are you going? To fix breakfast. To fix, uh, to fix breakfast. To make up your mind. I'm the new maid. Come back here, you idiot. Now, you lie still and act like a lady of luxury. You shall have a tray brought to you in bed, my Don't you dare. David, will you please stop all this not... Darling, I'm not that sort of lady. I wouldn't know what to do with breakfast in bed. Well, you'll find out. You'll find out. Claudia. What? You left the top off of the toothpaste again. I did? Oh, don't say so. Oh, yes, I do say so. Darling, please come back. I forgive you. For what? For leaving the top off the toothpaste. Hey, now, wait a minute. Listen, I mean it. You stay in bed, and I'll bring breakfast in bed to you. Now, you fix mine every morning. Why shouldn't I fix yours on Sunday? Because you work hard all week. You deserve a rest on Sundays. Aren't we unselfish, though? Now, don't try to pull the wool over my eyes. <laughs> You're not unselfish. You just think I can't do it. That's yes, all. Yes, dear. That's just what I think. Just the same as you think I can't drive a car. I'll jump in the shower and have it ready in a jiffy. You're going to fix my breakfast in this shower? Don't you do it. I'll be finished with breakfast <laughs> by the time you get back here. The strain of waiting is going to be dreadful. You'll be surprised. I hope so. (laughs) Hey, Claudia! What? Nothing, nothing, nothing. Now, where the deuce is... Hey, Claudia! Yes, what is it? Oh, never mind, never mind. What is the matter with you? Claudia, where in the blazes do you hide the coffee? I don't hide it. It's right where it always is. Where? On the first shelf. How much water do I put in? I thought you knew. Oh, all right. I'll fill the whole darn pot. Lovely coffee. Claudia! Where's the sugar? Next to the coffee. But I can't find the coffee. Don't get upset, dear. I'll be there in a minute. <laughs> hey, Claudia, there's no cream in the ice box. Didn't you know the car leaves it in front of the back door every morning? No. <laughs> Claudia, what? there is only one quart of milk here. I use the top of the bottle for cream. I have been robbed. It's done in the best of families. <laughs> Claudia! Yeah. Where's the sharp knife? Are you that desperate? No, don't, <laughs> don't act so smug. I, I want to cut the bread. The bread comes already sliced. No. Oh. Well, then there's nothing more to do. Yes, there is. You can set the table. Where are the dishes you use for breakfast? 
In the parlor underneath the sofa. Why, did you move them? I thought you kept them on the piano. Oh, no, no. Now, come on out of my kitchen. Now, scat, scat, scat. Well, wasn't I a help? Big yes, help? Yes, wonderful. A wonderful help. You've got enough water on to heat a bath. Now, run, read the paper, and I'll call you when everything's ready. I'd rather sit here and make eyes at you. Home, home on oh. the rain. Must I put up with this on a Sunday, too? Get off my stove, David. Hey, what'd you do with the coffee? I mislaid it. Well, I'll find it. It won't have any breakfast. There it is, right in front of your nose. What nose? There are only two noses in this room. You can see it's not front and mine. Oh, dear, where is it? Oh, oh, there it is. There's the sugar and there's the orange squeezer. And here's everything right in front of you. You're quite a competent little devil. Do you know that? Of course I knew it. This is a nice marriage. It was before you started all this singing. <laughs> oh, David, look. There are three noses in this where, room. Where, look, where, look, what? look. Our little mouse. As I live and breathe, if it isn't my old friend and colleague, Goliath. Come in, my boy. No, no, it isn't, David. That isn't Goliath. It's not as big as Goliath. It's a little Sunday mouse. Oh, a church mouse. Here, pussy, 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 pussy. pussy well, don't pussy. call him pussy. Now see what you've done. You've scared him out of his wits. Oh, Sunday afternoon sounds are different from every day, aren't they? It's funny. What? I was just thinking, I, I love the call of that boat on the river, just because we're w- walking together and going along the street together. And I love the sound of it, too. What's funny about it? Well, because if a person is alone and lonely, the same sound could almost break your heart. Yeah, I know what you mean. I remember the... Times in my life when a foghorn or a train whistle or even the sight of a lighted window looking down on a dark street made me sick with loneliness. When, David? Well, when my father died, for one thing. You hardly remember your mother, do you? Just barely. Honey, it's just the same with me, only turned wrong. Papa died when I was very young, and that brought Mama and me so close. You must have been close to your father, weren't you? You bet I was. Darling, would you... I mean, could we stop in and see Mama for a minute on the way home? <laughs> sure. I was just going to ask if you didn't want to. You were? Mm, look here, we're right in front of a florist. Let's stop in and buy some roses. Oh, no, don't, don't let But Mother loves flowers. Yeah, but she'll think we were feeling sorry for her or something. Look, I have a much better idea. There's a little stationery store next door. See, it's open on Sunday, uh, now, too. Now, what would Mother want with stationery? Don't you know you can buy anything in a stationery store? It's like a drug store. I bet they don't even sell stationery. <laughs> what are you going to get? Oh, just presents. What kind of presents? Oh, nothing, everything. You know, lots of bits of silly little things wrapped up in lots of pieces of paper and string. And <laughs> <laughs> Well, all right, come on. Where'd you two come from? Well, that's a nice welcome, Mrs. Brown. Come on, Claudia. Let's go home. <laughs> that hurt my feelings. Go on. Go home, both of you. All right. Come along, David. Wait a minute. Not so fast. What's in all those packages, sir? Presents. Now should we go home? Presents for who? For whom, not who. She's not very bright, David. Takes after her daughter. Oh, there's a trick in this somewhere. What's at the bottom of this to visit? Oh, we just came to wish you Merry Christmas. And a Happy New Year. And a joyous happy Thanksgiving. Happy New Year. <laughs> A lovely birthday, too. Here's your first present. Open it. Well, they're wrapped like they came out of a store. They did. We've been shopping for you for almost an hour, trying to think of what you like the most. Why, a cigar. Mm-hmm. Children, just what I've been longing for. You see, you yeah. see. I told you she'd like a cigar better than a bar of chocolate. Oh, no comparison. Right. And open the next one, Mom. I am, I am. Now, don't rush me. Well, if it isn't a package of matches to light the cigar. Oh, we think you of everything. Oh, dear, thoughtful children. And bubble gum, and a balloon, and a water pistol. Oh, that's for burglars. Good. Now, what can this box be? Well, why don't you open it and see? That's one way of finding out. Oh, how did you ever guess I needed a, how many? A hundred? No, a thousand rubber bands. Mm. Oh, you extraordinary. 
extravagant thing. <laughs> 500 would have been enough. <laughs> oh, no, not for you, Mama. We don't want you to stint yourself. Listen, you imbeciles. Don't you ever act like sane, grown-up people. Never. Now, how can this daughter of yours act sane and grown-up when she's not? I don't see how you stand her, David. I'm thinking very seriously of getting rid of her. You are. Now you're talking sense. What are you two bound for? We just came from someplace. Where? No place. Well, what she means, I presume, is, Mother, that we just went out and took a walk. A nice walk. What do you do all day, Mama? Oh, lots of things. Such as? None of your business. That's the way to handle her, Mother. What'd you have for lunch? What's that to you? Because you don't eat properly when you're alone. I ate properly. I don't believe it. I'm going to go and see what's in the ice box. Claudia, come back here. You're afraid to have me look. Nice, obedient daughter you've raised, Mrs. Brown. David, that child's worse than a detective. I bet it's tough to live alone, Mother, isn't it? You get used to it. Must be pretty lonely, though. Well, loneliness is a lesson we all have to learn. I guess so. And the funny part of it is, you have to learn it by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> What's the joke? What are you eating? I found a tomato. Hey, Seems a nice please. little tomato. You want mm, some? Looks good. David, you know the only other thing in her icebox besides butter and milk was an old cooked lamb chop on a plate and a little tiny piece of cheese. I took the cheese from the mouse. You don't mind, do you? You're welcome. Thanks. Why didn't you eat the chop? Want that, too? No, we lost our dog. What are you having for supper? Turtle soup, broiled squab on toast, and baked Alaska. Mm. I think... I think we'll stay, Claudia. I should say so. We're only having leftovers. <laughs> Yes, dear. You sleep? No. You lying so quietly. So were you. I was thinking about what a beautiful day it was. I was too. Really? Mm-hmm. We didn't do anything except take a walk and have supper with Mama. No, I don't think she'd have eaten a morsel if you hadn't brought things in from the delicatessen. It was darling of you to suggest staying, David. Oh, I enjoyed it. I always enjoy it. Besides, I was... Just paying off a little debt of gratitude. What do you mean? For what? To Mama. For having you as a daughter. You know, it has the same sort of holy quality as a church bell. Hasn't it, David? Yes, it has. I guess it's striking twelve. The end of a perfect day. David. Yes, dear? Would you think I was very silly if I paid a little debt of gratitude, too? No, dear. Then thank you, God, for everything. All story material used on this broadcast of Claudia was under the supervision of Rose Franken and William Brown Maloney. When you're shopping, it's always a pleasant surprise to meet up with a friend, isn't it? That's a good time to share the pause that refreshes with ice-cold Coca-Cola from the familiar red cooler. It's natural and easy to pause there and go on your way refreshed. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again Monday at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir and remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. <laughs>